Hey, what's up? This is Alva here. Enfant Leve have just released the second part of their Collection 15, rounding things out, meaning that they've got a whole new bunch of jackets, pants, accessories, things like that, as well as, most notably, a full women's collection. Now, I can't do the best job of reviewing the latter, unfortunately, but what we are going to do is take a look at an update to an old Enfant Leve favourite, the Hermes 2. I have the original version of these in Shola Dryskin, and over the last two or three years, they've pretty much been my go-to cargo, certainly my most worn, and I've worn them everywhere from events to plane travel, remember that, um, and even short hikes. Now we're taking a look at the brand new version, which are Ash Dyed Stots. We can draw some comparisons between those two versions. The Ash Dyed Stots colour, that is brand new for this season, and there was also a bit of a pocket update between the older version and the Collection 14 version, so we can note some differences there as well. And of course, I'll give my overall long-term experience with the MS2 as well. So, let's take a closer look. The MS2 is a slim, tapered cargo pants silhouette that really epitomizes the urban techwear look of military-influenced clothing given a modern and performance-focused imagining. It's a shape popularized by acronyms P10, a model which has massively influenced the techwear starter pack look, and we'll talk more about some of those potential comparisons later in the video. There are a few other key parts to the Hermes 2's look too. At the cuffs you'll find some zips which can be used to adjust the fit and facilitate this harsh taper while still letting you get your foot in and out. The gusset behind the YKK zip means this still looks fine undone, giving you multiple potential looks, although done up is definitely the primary way to wear these. Having these in stots, as I do, a material with no stretch to it, having that zip is definitely important in helping you get your foot in, these would not be particularly comfortable to get on without that. They're also quite long relative to most other pants. This is an intentional effect designed to provide some stacking, and you'll see those kind of folds of material appearing a little bit on the bottom half of the leg. It also means you've got a little bit of room to play with when you're moving around, it ensures that these aren't going to start riding up your leg. The other real benefit to the construction of these is in the knees. You'll see quite a complex pattern of articulation here, both with material darts and different panelling detailing, and you've got a bit of extra space in the knee, these kind of knee bags as well, which mean that if you are moving around a lot in these, you'll find that these work with you extremely well, despite the relatively slim shape overall. There's a gusseted crotch which further aids with that ease of movement, and you'll find over the knees as well, the material is actually doubled up, so if you're on your knees for whatever reason, which you know, I'm not going to judge you for, then there is a solution to aid in that durability. This is an important part of the review, is, uh, make sure that you know you can move your legs very easily. I do this every day, and it's fine. The articulation pattern is exactly the kind of thing that is going to separate a pair of luxury or more premium pants from a cheap alternative, something that just looks techwear. You will absolutely notice the difference moving around in these. I've been wearing these once or twice for hikes now, like walking around for a few hours, and I don't find these restrictive at all, despite them being pretty slim compared to your average pair of hiking pants. That construction is present across all the versions of the Enfant Levé Amesti, but there is something that is different, and that is the cargo pocket design. On the older versions, which I believe are still available, you've got a Velcro main pocket with a little zipped sub pocket that has these little dangly zip pulls on there. The more recent version, which is used from Collection 14 and beyond, has a more complex design where you've got this semi-floating material flap that covers a waterproof zip, and behind that, you've got a phone pocket on each side. That means on the 14 version you've got a total of three different dedicated device pockets. You've got the ones behind each cargo pocket, and you do have a little phone pocket uh, nearer the waist on the right hand side. So obviously you're probably not going to need these all at once, but it means you've got an option, depending on your preference, where you like to have your phone, you can do it. I like it on the left cargo pocket personally, but that's because I'm a lefty. I imagine because of the shape of the new cargo pockets, those phone pockets were something that could just be added in there without really affecting the look of these or without it being too difficult. So they probably thought, hey, why not? Might as well give people a bit of extra choice. The new pockets themselves, I think, look much cleaner and much more refined than the older version, um, which I think, in comparison, now look a little bit basic. And it's really that material flap which conceals the zipped entrance that's the key to that. 
but it's still very modern looking. I do think it still stays true to that urban techwear kind of aesthetic. But if you look back at the old version, yeah, those little zips with the pull cords, they're pretty fun. It makes those bits very easy to access. And the Velcro pocket, to its credit, is very easy to access as well. But that kind of look, the sort of cargo pocket dangly strap kind of aesthetic, has been increasingly co-opted by the kind of Instagram techwear warcore kind of crowd. And I imagine it's something that on Fon Levy are maybe trying to distance themselves from a little bit now. The waterproof zips and the concealed design definitely make the cargo pockets for the new design more secure, although they're not quite as quick to use. With a Velcro pocket, obviously, you can just boom, whack it open and shove your hand in there. I think these have a decent capacity. They're certainly not small by any means, but it's a relatively sleek design, so it's quite a slim opening. And personally, I find if you're reaching in and out of these to get stuff, um, your hands will kind of uh, rub against the zip a little bit, so that's something to be aware of if you're going to use these for constant access. Dual front and back pockets mean you've got a lot of capacity in these pants without them really looking super bulky or like they're covered in pockets. You've got back ones are kind of angled and have a zipped closure, so they're still fairly easy to access whilst like the cargo pockets being semi-concealed and the front pockets mercifully are unzipped which makes them far easier to use. No doubt these are very useful and functional pants overall, and from my own experience I found that there's always somewhere to put something if you need to. Um, that's invaluable if you're travelling for example, which I know, but you'll often want like passport, wallet, phone, keys, coins, stuff like that, and you want them easily accessible, but you also want them all compartmentalised. Well, you can do that in something like this, and they don't look like a big bulky pair of military trousers. I remember back when I used to go to gaming events for work, I used the phone pocket just to keep people's business cards in there so that they didn't get lost or mixed up with other stuff. All this though, and we haven't even talked about the brand new element for Collection 15, which is the ash dyed Stotts colour. This is a new, it's a unique thing with this distressed finish as well, which looks very kind of grungy, it's a bit kind of destroyed looking, which really contrasts with the overall future and fairly sleek look of the MS2. They describe this on the website as brown grey, which I think is pretty accurate personally, and of course you've got these distressed uh, dark marks that are put over the top. I think this is a great unique colour, it's something that other brands in this space are not really doing in this way. You do of course have people like Hamkus, which are going all in on kind of distressed, destroyed finishes, but that's uh, mirrored with the actual construction and the overall aesthetic of the clothing, which does does have this very overall dystopian apocalyptic look to it. On Fun Leve, of course, much more, yeah, sleek, futuristic, but then still applying these interesting new effects. You've got something that's pretty experimental, but then applied to something that is more wearable, or at least people are going to find in general easier to integrate with their current clothing. From a styling perspective, I think this goes great with black. It makes a nice little bit of contrast, but having the distressed parts of the Hermes 2 in black, obviously, gives you a little bit of a kind of familiarity between various pieces there. But these can also work quite nicely with lighter colours as well. I've been wearing these lounging around the house with the a cold wall hoodie, and I think the two make a pretty nice combo. So yeah, they definitely do look pretty unusual by themselves. This is clearly off the beaten track in terms of colours, but yeah, very very easy to subdue I think, and um, then you'll end up with something that's pretty interesting and a bit different, but isn't like some crazy over the top pattern. I don't think, for example, you have to go all in on distressed looks or the apocalyptia to, uh, to really be able to effectively wear these. So it might be the kind of thing that will appeal to you if you're a little bit sick of wearing all black and you do just want something that's a bit different, but you're not quite willing to lean uh, super hard into those more experimental brands like Hamkus. If you want to know more about Stotts as a material from both an aesthetic and a performance perspective, I've done a whole video comparing a few different materials available from Enfant Levé, so uh, you can check that out if you're not really sure about the differences, but in short, I think it works well with the MS2 here. I think the extra structure that Stotts affords uh, contributes nicely to the stacking effect that you'll have on these, and of course, the high level of articulation means that the, um, the kind of lack of stretch on these compared to something like dry skin isn't as much of a problem, and it still makes these comfortable to wear. But you've got that extra abrasion resistance and the durability, and uh, yeah, for future kind of going out in, in more uh, 
uh, rough terrain, I suppose. I tend to go hiking in like woods a lot, so there's a lot of brambles and stuff. I would definitely pick these over the dry skin version now. They're not quite as comfy as dry skin on the whole, and if you don't own any kind of performance material pants, I would definitely recommend checking out dry skin. But as I say, the articulation definitely contributes positively to the comfort of these, and I certainly have no issues wearing these all day and doing various activities in them, no problem. Something I noticed with the long-term fairly heavy wear on the originals is the Cobrac snaps that secure the waist um, have kind of loosened a little bit over time. So now they're not quite as resistive as they used to be and they pop open fairly easily. The Velcro has also lost some of its stickiness um, and combined with the fact that these were not perfectly aligned when they were new anyway, now it is super easy to unflap those flaps. Aside from that though, they're still in great condition. They're far from being worn out. I've not really damaged them in any meaningful way. If I wanted both the Velcro and the snaps to be replaced, I'm sure I could have that done at relatively low cost. And I noticed actually on these new ones, the outer snap is this kind of stronger, more secure variety. Um, which is of course a good thing, but it also means that if you're exerting enough force to open that first snap, the second one will kind of automatically follow, which is quite a good idea really, but you still got the security and the, the structure of having both of them there. And of course, you've got belt loops as well. So you've got a you've got an actual belt holding your pants up too. And there is an internal drawstring as well, but can't say I've ever used that. It just dangles there for style points. Now, I promised I'd return to the acronym comparison, and the Enfant Levé MS2 is probably the clearest example of the brand taking inspiration, shall we say, from acronym. If you know about the P10, you will definitely see quite a few similarities here, from the overall shape, that slim, aggressive taper, from the complex knee articulation, which acronym originally was inspired by motocross pants coming up for their design you've got the zips at the cuffs, you've got even the angled concealed zips at the back of the MS2 kind of resembles a similar part of the design on the P10. And while the cargo pockets are quite different to what you would find on the acronym P10A, which is the cargo pocket version, they are fairly similar to the pockets on the P30 ADS. Um, but instead of the zip being on that material flap, it's on the main body of the pant instead. They're even offered in the same materials of dry skin and stots. And while overall they don't look identical, they're clearly not a replica, I think it would be also fairly hard to argue that these are not in any way inspired by Acronym and the P10 in particular. Making stuff with those similarities is rocky terrain, especially when you're undercutting the P10 by something like 50%. It's just something to be conscious of, I think. But it is definitely a good thing to see examples of Enfant Levé uh, being willing to experiment and developing their own identity more. And I think the ash dyed stocks color is partly evidence of that in that that's something that the immediate competitors aren't really doing. You'll also see some of their dry skin pants coming in grey, which again is not something other people are doing. More significantly though, that women's line is something that is totally unique, and that is definitely an area where they can help develop that brand identity a little bit more, and really provide these kinds of solutions that other brands don't seem to be offering people. There are a bunch of new styles and ideas that are present in this new women's collection that is definitely going to appeal to techwear fans in a fairly unique way. I also have to note the customization options on Fun Leve offer do add some value there too. If you've got a good handle on your measurements, you know exactly how you want something to fit, then um, on Fun Leve are going to give you the opportunity to do that without you having to buy something off the shelf and then take it to a tailor, for example. These ones though are an off the shelf size large, which I think fit me fine. I tend to buy most pants in large. The old dry skin ones that I have are in a medium, um, but I think because these don't have any stretch to them and I wanted to get a little bit more of that stacking going on, um, I think large was definitely the play here and I think it worked out fine. My frequent wearing of the originals is testament to how much I like the Hermes 2 model, both in terms of its look and in terms of the comfort and the performance. These ones are certainly no different with the new color really breathing a new bit of life into this design and providing something that other brands are not really doing but can still integrate with relative ease into people's wardrobes, particularly if they're looking to experiment that little bit without going totally off the rails. The other changes, the material going to stots from dry skin and the new pocket design are as much side grades as they are upgrades, in that stots has its advantages in terms of its structure and its durability, 
but dry skin has its own advantages too and you might prefer those. And similarly with the pockets, you've got greater security, you've got I think a more mature and a sleek look with the updated design, but they can't beat the quick access of the velcro pockets and the little dangly straps. Personally, I think as someone that tends to just stick something in a cargo pocket and forget about it all day, the new version is my favourite and I do think that the new version looks better as well. But if you prefer that easy access and you need constant access to something in those cargo pockets, you can go for the old version. And that is it, my second review, in fact, of the On Von Leve MS2. Let me know uh, what you think about these pants, of course, and how you think they stack up to the original version, and which one would you go for? Are you more in favour of this brand new, uh, the cool, interesting colour version that's a little bit more off the beaten track, kind of got its own identity a bit more, or are you more in favour of the classics, the all-black dry skin providing that nice, comfy, stealthy ninja look? Either way, let me know your thoughts. And uh, thanks for watching as always, and we will be back next week with another video. Oh, and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Shout out to Targus Macintosh. Yes, the Neman front pocket has pretty much limitless capacity. You can put anything you want in there. And shout out to Music by Ishi picking up a pair of white Speedcross 3s to do a bit of a self-die job on, uh, which sounds really cool, so hope that goes well. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then you can hit a button on the side and do that as well. And you can check out the brand new Techwear stuff that comes out every single week, and you can do it before everyone else. Get ahead of the game.